Okay, so now I'm going to launch into how to create an assessment. So how to create an assessment. This is the real nitty gritty of, of how to get this done. And there's a number of steps and there's a level of sophistication that we can work through as well. Obviously the most basic form is a series of questions and that's it. Just a series of questions and they get answered by the student and that's it. Now that alone needs to be set up and there's a deg degree of um, sophistication in making sure that the steps are created correctly on the right paths and then the links are in the email. These are all the things that we have to do to make sure these um, things work together. Then after that though, there's a le level of sophistication we can go to which is adding learning content in as well to the um, form. We can also break up the, uh, the questions and the learning content into pages or into what we call subforms. Um, and that can be beneficial if, for example, you've got courses that build on each other and they're sold separately. So in the case of first aid, a, um, a CPR course tends to be included with a first aid course, um, but the CPR course doesn't require all of the first aid questions to be asked, just the CPR questions. And so in that instance, when you're in a first aid and CPR course, you need to get all of the questions, but you only need a subset if you're just doing the CPR. So that's an example of how you can break up these questions, say just the CPR questions in one subform, and they can be added on to the um, added on in bulk to the first aid with CPR course. So you can you can do some pretty clever things with splitting out the questions and being able to reuse them um, and makes it nice and easy. So when you update them once, they update through the whole lot, which is pretty handy. So let's get through. Let's get into this uh, creating an assessment. It's a fun thing to do. Um, so look here, so we're going to look at um, learning content. You can put learning content, like I said, um, you can uh, do an overview of assessments. Uh, you can create an assessment. Um, and this is just going through some other content, which you, know, you don't have to worry about. We can tell you some advanced features as well and how to manage lots of assessments. Okay, so step one, we're going to create the questions as multi-choice fields. Okay, so that's the first step. Um, step two, add the fields to a process step form. Step three, add the step for the assessment to the path. And finally, add the link to the email. Okay, so the email that gets sent to the student um, has to have a link in it so the student can then complete that assessment that they need to for that course. I'm adding the step in the assessment here, and I'll just uh, use my super duper, uh, let's have a look, see here, annotate, use my spotlight. So adding a step for the assessment to the path this is what tells us that someone's completed that work. Okay, so when they click on that link, they then are effectively applying that step, um, which tells us they've completed that work. So this is the basic, the, the basic design. We've got an assessment, and within it, we have a series of questions, and these are multi-choice radio fields. Okay, so this is the one we're going to create to start with. This is just a schematic, obviously. It doesn't look like a big blob um, of, the, um, of the assessment. Okay, so first, first point is creating the questions. Now remember, questions are created as fields. You can find this under the Forms tab, and then there's a Fields icon that will display all of the fields. You can create a new one straight from there. Um, now, if you don't have a, um, a standard license, then you may be restricted on not being able to create these fields, um, but, um, but you can just upgrade to the standard license, then you'll get access to create these. Um, so first thing is your name and your label. Now, neither of these are used as the question. In fact, neither of these are displayed when we incorporate them into the assessment. These help you know whether or not, uh, help you know what question you need to fix. Now here, we've just got a, a series, we've actually got the question in the name. But a lot of times it might be more sensible to actually have a reference number. So you could have choking 001, for example, um, or question 001. Um, it just helps to have the question in there sometimes. If you haven't got too many questions, um, often your customers, if they've got a, they've got a concern about a question, will actually, uh, will actually quote the question back to you. And this is a good way to be able to find those and fix them if they're wrong. Obviously, we need a type of multiple choice radio. Um, and we want the visit visibility to be public and private. So that is to say we want um, customers to be able to see it. And we want the class width to be 100. So it takes up the full width of the form. You can divide them out so they um, appear multiple questions on either side of the form. But it gets a bit squashed up, to be honest. Um, and it's probably best keeping them at 100%. The next part, within further down, when you're editing the field, 
um, is adding the question in. So this is where we actually add the question in. We've got this question field here, and you can include HTML in this question field as well, um, and that will um, be used. You can, for example, put lists. Now it's not an HTML um, editor, this particular field, but if you were to put the little uh, brackets of B, for example, for bold or strong, which does the same thing, um, a, a, a one of those angle bracket before and after a word, then you'll bold that word, okay? So if you've got any HTML skills, um, those are the ways to use them. Very basic HTML though, don't try and get too sophisticated with styles and things if you have knowledge in that area. So that's the question, then you've got the answer. You need at least two answers to be saved as a multi-choice um, field. Obviously you've got to have a choice for the customers. And you do have the option of including text if they select a particular answer. So in this case, you might want to say, um, let's say for example, no, reconsider how many blows because 10 blows um, is uh, probably a bit much for someone um, if they, um, if they need a back blow. Or for example, you could say, could you please refer to page 15 of your student workbook um, to, to find out the correct answer for this question. You can actually provide them with information to, to, to learn more about what they're doing. Uh, now, the further down on the field, there's more to fill out for this particular, um, particular um, type of question. Um, We've got, to, we've got to say which answer is correct. So number two refers to this answer here. Okay, so if we specify two, so that's a drop down and there's six different options because there are a possibility of six different answers. So you choose which answer is correct. So at the moment you can only have one answer that's correct. Um, and then you've got to specify how many points this question is worth. So if you would like to give more points to a particular question because it's very tricky and you like the idea of people getting a few extra bonus points, then you can specify that here and people can get different points. These are the points that are used to work out if someone's passed. Um, and you'll see that shortly when we create the assessment form um, and we'll be able to specify the number of points we're looking for for a pass. And again, we can have a customized mes message when the user gets the correct answer. And we can also have a message if the user gets the wrong answer as well. So um, you can customize that if you need to. Oh, I was gonna sneeze for a moment there, but I didn't, so I'm, I'm safe. <laughs> okay, so next is creating the assessments. This is when we create the form where we put the fields. Okay, so the form, again, this is found under the forms tab and then under forms. And this is actually going to be a process step form we're adding. Okay, so give it a name such as choking in this case and give it a pass mark. Remember, this is the number of marks that you expect someone to get to be able to pass. Um, now, if you want them to get a full marks, Make sure you put all of the marks that are in there. So if your assessment is worth uh, a 10 marks, then you've got to put 10 in there if you want them to get everything right. Um, and now you can also limit the maximum attempts if you want. You can only give them two attempts, for example. And then those that, that two attempts, if someone tries it and gets it wrong, then this content will be displayed here, content for fail. This is optional, but the content for fail try again is if they apply it once and you've given them two attempts here, then this content will be displayed. If they then try the two attempts and they still fail, they then get the content for failed. If they, if you've got zero attempts on there, if you've got zero attempts on there, they can try as long as they want. They can have as many attempts at getting this right as possible. They'll effectively never see this content for failed try again and never see the content for failed over here. They'll only see this content for passed. And you also got the option to display them or get marking comments from the trainer portal here. So get them the marking comments from the trainer portal. Um, so that allows the trainer to pass comment on each of the answers that the student has submitted. So here's an example of uh, where we've got some questions here. Obviously you click on the little green plus button there that allows you to add another field. So in this, in this case, you can see we've got two fields here, two questions in this assessment. Um, and that means that we can just keep adding them by clicking on the plus sign, it will add them, uh, add these questions onto the form. 
onto the assessment. So once you've done that, you've got a save and preview. When you get to the next page, it will show you what the form looks like. I'm gonna show you in a moment by going into this form actually, and just showing you um, this action. And then it'll ask you to publish. You publish that form, um, and then that is ready to be displayed to the customer. Must remember to publish the form, um, pretty important then. Okay, so let's um, let's see the next step. Once you've done that, once, let's say you've created your, um, your process step assessment form. And now what you want to do is you want to add it into your workflow. Okay, now adding into your workflow means getting into the process path. So what I suggest is you open up the process path that is relevant for the course where you want them to do the assessment. Um, click on the little plus button here. This, is, this gives you the option. And as you put the mouse over this field, you get the option to click on the plus button here, and that will allow you to create a new process step. Okay, so create a new process step. You can enter a name for the process, oopsie daisies. Enter a name for the process step, a label for the process step, a short name, choose the documents record type, and choose days relative to start date, and then click on save. And then type in that bite size choking, and then that will appear here. Okay, so pretty quick way of creating the process step. Now remember, if you've got any questions, feel free to post something in the chat or um, unmute yourself and, uh, and holler out to me, okay? If you need to get to the chat, often you have to click on the chat button down the bottom in the bar, um, and that will bring up the chat button for you. Okay, so we've got the, uh, then, then what you've got to do is you've got to choose that process step form as an extranet form. Okay, so we've got the process step sorted. Now we want to uh, choose an extranet form, click on the lightning bolt, choose the form you've just created earlier. And if it's not there, maybe you didn't publish it. So go and have a look, see, see what this deal is with that. Or maybe you gave it, um, you didn't call it a process step form. It's got to be a process step form to be able to appear in this list. Okay, so we're not choosing it down here. We're choosing it here to be an extra net form because we're going to get our customers from outside of course sales to access it. So that's why we need to have it as an extra net form. Next step, once we've done that, so once you've saved your path, the system then updates the accessibility of that form in these content field references. So this is when we're updating the email. So you find the email by going to the content tab, or sorry, going to the publish tab and then the content button. Okay, that'll give you the list of content and then you can filter by type email and then find the email, click on the little edit button to the right and then let's start editing the email. Now, once we're in there, we click on the email body because that's where we wanna put our link. We can select the text, click on the fields button here. That will get up our reference list, a field reference list. Now choose the record type documents and type in extranet. Now extranet is gonna give you a list of all the extranet links. If you wanted to, you could just type in choking and it would still find it for, for because it uses the, the form and in fact it uses the process step as a, um, as a reference to the field. So you can more quickly find those, that information. And once you've got it, you copy that, those square brackets there. This is, this is a unique link to this particular form, okay? So every time this template gets sent out, it's gonna go to this particular form and people are gonna complete it. So once we've copied that, we put that over here. So we've, so we've selected that text there, then clicked on this little link button, and that's allowed us to copy in the square bracket here, which links to the choking form. Okay, so then we, once we've done that, we can uh, save, we save the email, and now that email will have a link in it that takes us directly to that particular um, assessment. So, before we get on to this more sophisticated uh, area, which is adding and learning content, I just want to go into the to a, a section and show you this in operation. Okay, I want to show you the different fields. I want to show you the forms. Um, I want to show you the publishing of the forms, and then going into the email, so you can actually see um, how it works. Okay, so here I want to show you the forms that I've got set up. Okay, so um, you can see there the process steps down here. 
I'm going to go in there and edit that, click on the pencil. And I can filter over here if I wanted to by process steps, just to make sure if I have too many. There we go, there it is there, click on edit. Okay, so I've changed the name a little bit here because I was doing some other modifications. But this is the field here. You can see how I've actually added some learning content, which I'm going to be talking about in a moment. But I just want to show you a few extra things here. This is the question. I can open this up and show more details. Now, in this case, I wanted to show you that I'm actually able, if I want to, to add some HTML in here. Now, this might look familiar. This is the form text for the first field. Now, I can, if I wanted to, really quick way of adding content in, I can literally just paste in that content that I got from YouTube about this particular video. And I can even add some extra content. You can see there that I've added that, those strong tags, that just makes it bold. So the text is, is much easier to see. The BRs are just breaks, so that just provides some space. So you don't need to be a highly sophisticated um, uh, HTML uh, editor or guru. Um, there's just some basic things that work, copying and pasting, for example, from either um, SlideShare or YouTube is a good way to incorporate some content. Um, but also you can, like I say, copy it directly here into the form text, which goes above the first field. There's some other stuff in here. You can see I've got some, we've got this uh, layout and manager, et cetera. None of these are really required. Um, I changed, I've got some, a, a sexy HTML class there because I'm changing the look and feel of those particular fields when they get displayed to the customer. Um, and if I put sexy on there, I know that it actually applies a different type of uh, class. And this, that's more sophisticated stuff that you, you may not wish to do. Um, but really all you've got to worry about is form text could be useful and the field is very important, okay? The field is what specifies the question. So if I take away this learning content and just do a save and preview here. Here we go, you see it's, it's displaying that video and then it's got the series of questions. This is just a preview, so we're not gonna have the buttons here. And then I've got to click on publish if I want to have a look at the public version, I can. That's only useful usually if you've been hiding some fields. So you may have some fields you don't want the customer to see. And in that case, you can check to make sure the customer can't see them. So if I click on publish, this is going to publish that form and now make it available for inclusion. Now, if I want to edit those emails, I go to publish, go to content. If I go content type email, and filter that. Now I know that I've set these email, the emails I've set up are registration bite size courses. But if I didn't know what email was, was going to be appropriate, I could go through and have a look at what emails come from which of the, which, which email is being sent to the student that I want to include the link on. I'm gonna click on the edit button here to edit this content. You can see here, I've got the email subject. If I click on the email body, that's my text. If I click on this button here, it's gonna come up with what the link is, which will look familiar to you. And if I wanted to find the different fields, click on field, choose documents, type in extranet. Or I could type in choking. There we go. And I can just copy that. And that's the link that will be generated when the email gets sent. So hopefully that's, uh, hopefully that's pretty clear. Let's um, get back to the more sophisticated with learning content. So I showed you one way of including learning content, which is just having the questions and putting that into the form text. But in fact, you might need, however, to reuse that learning content. If you wanted to reuse the learning content in other places, then it's, you're gonna to have to copy and paste it multiple times. And that's no fun. So we might wanna create our own special uh, field, which represents our learning content. So what we're gonna do 
is we're going to create um, learning content field and our content is going to be linked to that field and that field will be linked to the assessment. So we're going to create the content under publish and content. We're going to create the field for the content under form and fields. There's a, there's, a, there's a similarity here. You're always going to be creating a field to link it onto the form. And then we're going to add the field to the form. Okay, so now we've gone into create content. So we create content under the publish tab. And you'll see there you can get a list of the content. Content includes things like um, emails. Uh, in this case, fields. We're creating content type field. And we're going to give it a name. Now, neither of these names are used when we create it, but there are a way for you to make sure you can manage your content well. So if you have lots of content, it's a good idea to have some consistency amongst all that content, such as here where it says learning content, and then to have a name that differs, for example, choking. In fact, I would usually do it around the other way. I would say learning content, and then I would say choking, so that when it gets sorted in the lists, I can very clearly see what's learning content. And it allows you also to search if you need to for different types of learning content. And you can see down the bottom here, we've had that choking presentation copied in. We actually use the tools and the viewing the source to copy that. And you can't just copy that in as normal text. You've actually got to copy it into the, what's called the source code of the, of the content. So now we've created that content. I've saved that content. I've now gone in to create the field. So we go to the forms uh, tab. And from the forms tab, I can click on fields, get a list of the fields, or I can create a new field by clicking on the new button beside there and give it a name. So give the, uh, the con again, this is learning content, but this is, the for this is the field for the learning content. So I've got, give it a name there, give it a label. Again, these are just used um, as ways of, uh, of filtering out this. In fact, the, in this case, the, the label the label is actually displayed. So you may want to consider whether or not you want what, what you want the label to be. Um, we choose the type content field, click on the lightning bolt, and then you can choose the learning content that you've created. Choose an HTML class of 100 again, and that's pretty much all you have to do on this content, creating the content field, and click on add. Finally, adding a field to the form. So once we've created that field, we now just need to add that field to the form. So just like normal, click on that plus button on the form, choose from the field dropdown or type in learning content. You'll get a list of the different learning contents you've got. Choose that and then save the form. And that displays that. Okay, so I wanna show you that as well. Just gonna exit out of the presentation and go over here to the fields. So I click on forms. Just gonna show you my form to start with. There's my choking lecture one, I've called it. Okay, so you can see here, I've got choking lecture one. Now I have to make a modification to this because I've gone and put the content into the form text, remember? See, you've got that content in the form text. So if I did put a field on here, this is all gonna come up twice. So I'm gonna cut that. I'm gonna save and preview and just show you what it looks like without the content in there. There we go, that's what it looks like without the content. Now I'm gonna go on to publish, into content. If I can click on new. I can call this my choking content new. I'm not going to put anything in for the label this time. Now I, I, I've copied the, um, the HTML from the page. So I'm going to show you how you can add that in here. I'm going to click on tools, click on source code, and then paste it in. So you can see it appears there. So if you, do, if you do copy any slide share or any other online code, the way to get it onto this, um, onto this content is to click on tools, go to source code, and then copy it in here. 
you can still make modifications. You can still add additional text in here. And you can even do things like add images and, and download buttons and things like that. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this name because keeping, keeping this content well managed is extremely important because if you don't manage your content well, it can be a real nightmare. Okay, so I'm gonna click on add. <clears throat> oh, didn't choose the right content type. And in this case, it's gonna be a field. So I wanna create a field. Okay, so that's content type field created. Now I've got to create the, uh, the field to add on to the form. So I'll click on forms up there. Beside fields, I'm going to click on new. Now I've pasted, I've copied the name, so I'm going to copy that in here. And I'm going to choose here content field. And click on the lightning bolt and have a look. So this is the, I've created a few others previously. I'm going to choose that one. That's the one I've most recently created. I'm going to make my class 100. It's already chosen public and private. And I'm going to click on add. Okay, so that's when my field's been created now for my content. Now I've got to add it onto my form. Click on form. Or I could do something clever and come up here to my history because I know that I've edited this form before. I can click on forms there. There we go. Now I'm gonna add that field in, which is my content field. There we go, there it is. And now save and preview. There we go. So that content has been now been added. Now, because it's a field, I can add that field onto other forms as well. So if I wanted to um, customize the delivery, for example, and have different content um, for different people, I could do that. Now I can click on publish. There we go. That's all published now and it's ready to go. It's gonna be available. In fact, now I've made that change, I don't need to change the email because the email already has the link to that content. That form hasn't changed, it's still the same form, it's just got some additional content. So once you've set those emails up once, once you've set those process steps and the paths up once, you're good to go for that particular um, assessment. Now we're at the... Uh, one hour, 45 minute, but I'll, we start a bit late. So I'll just continue on. I'll probably get through this content, which will be pretty, pretty handy. It'll be a nice, some um, quick session. Um, let's do the presentation here. Okay, so I've shown you how to uh, add a field and to, onto the form, which is creating the assessment. I've also shown you about learning content. Now I wanna go a step further and you see here we've got questions. I also wanna show you about subforms. Now what subforms do is they allow us to group a series of questions together. Okay, so the subform takes a series of fields, puts it into a subform, and that subform can be used in multiple places. Now this is really handy. This is very helpful because that means that rather than adding each single question in every time you have to create a new, um, uh, a new assessment, you only have to add the subform in and have a guess what do we do with subforms? We create a field for a subform. So we add a field to a form. One field, but that one field is a subform. So the subform has multiple fields in it. So it's a field within a it's a field within a subform within a field on a form. It's you'll get it. You'll get it. Let me see if I can show you. Okay. So really useful to reuse question lists, help manage lots of assessments. So if you've got a whole lot of assessments that are using multiple groups of questions, and this is a good way to do it, um, particularly if you wanna keep learning content with the questions, because you can include the learning content in the subform. So the subform, the subforms can effectively become micro learning representations, okay? They can be micro learning activities that are done. And in fact, you can go a step further, which I'll show you in a moment, which is actually converting those subforms into pages. You can have multiple pages on an assessment, on a form, um, which again is very helpful. Okay, so uh, the steps are to create the subform, create the subform field, add the subform field to the assessment. In other words, add the subform field to the form, to the assessment form. 
Naming is important again. When think about it, we've got all these things flying around. We've got content with a different name. We've got fields. We've got subforms. We've got uh, fields of subforms. Naming is really important here. So make sure you keep your naming conventions consistent and try and include um, similar names as the as the sort of the babushka doll is made up. Okay, what's in the center has the same name as what's on the outside. Same name as what's on the outside. Beyond that. Okay, so and uh, like I say, any pages, any page references you want, any sort of pagination of this information should be done on the subform, not on the form. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean in a moment about that. So I will be doing this um, uh, for you as well, so you can have a look. Okay, so how do you create a subform? It's easy peasy, lemon squeezy, because all you have to do is change the record type. So if you have an existing assessment, an existing form, and you want to change it to a subform, just change the record type. That's all you have to do. Easy, really easy. When it comes to naming, however, you might want to consider giving them a specific name. So this is, cho I've got chosen Choking Lecture 1. Well, I'll show you how I'm going to create Choking Lecture 2 as well, and I'm going to put it on two pages so you can see the two pages. But you don't have to worry about any of this other information here for the subform, okay? This information, this form information around pass marks, about content for failed, et cetera, that all comes from the main form, that is the assessment form, okay? For a subform, that information does not apply. Okay, so now you've created your subform, now you've got to create your subform field. So create a field, give it a name, you'll see that I've given the name subform at the end of it, I've used the same name as the subform, but I called, called it subform, um, because I want to be able to distinguish it um, from my say content fields. Um, and we've got, we're calling it a type subform. Once you choose the type for the field as a subform, you'll get a list of all the subforms that are available to you and choose which is the subform that you need. Okay, so once you've done that, you're all set to go. Now it's just like a normal assessment. You're adding a subform field to your assessment. But you only need to add one field now because that has all of your questions and in fact all of your content that you need okay so it's just the same except down the bottom here we have the choking lecture one subform this is where we store all our pass mark maximum attempts etc this is where we store all the other information about this assessment so this is the choking assessment okay so let me show you that and how to do that. So I'm going to go through the process of effectively creating a subform, creating a subform field, um, adding that to, in fact, I'm going to create, I'm going to make it so we add two subform fields onto a form. Um, so let's have a look see here. I'll filter. I'm going to, I'm going to be boring and just use the existing questions. So I'm not going to create a whole additional set of questions, but before, and I'm not going to create pages yet. I'm going to create one without pages. So you can see the two sets of questions coming in. Um, so here we go. Lecture one. I'm going to, uh, let's see, da, 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 da. that's the published form. Let's be careful you don't go into the published form list. I don't want to do that. I want to go to forms and I want to go to the, go to these forms here, process step forms. Okay, where it is, there it is there. So I'm going to use this ad based on this form. Okay, I'm going to use add based on this form because I want to create lecture two. So I'm going to call this lecture two. Lecture two. It's still got, got that content in it. Um, none of this stuff is going to matter because I'm going to turn it into a sub form. And um, we do have an update to actually hide this stuff when you choose sub form. That will happen in the future. Okay, so this, you can see you've got all those questions on there still. I'm going to click on add. So now I've created my subform. Now I'm going to go in and show you it. In fact, I prepared something earlier, I hope, where I've got, there we go. Look, I've got lecture one and lecture two subforms in there. Okay, now I'm going to go to field. This is my list of fields. Let's see if we've got an existing subform field. Okay, there we go. There's one there. That's for lecture one. Okay, so I'm going to create a new one. So I'll do that from scratch for you. Okay, I'm going to click on new up here by the fields. Now again, what you can do is be kind of clever about it. 
choose your internal type first. Oopsie daisy, not internal type. Choose your type first. Choose your subform. So I'm going to choose the lecture two. And now I'm going to copy and paste that up here. And I'm going to call it subform. In fact, I'm going to get rid of my label because I don't want my label coming up, um, which I think it might do if I edit there. And I'm going to change my content to 100%. So that's all, that's the only changes I need to do. I'm gonna click on add. So I've now created a field for lecture two. Now I'm gonna go back to my assessment. So the assessment is, let's go back in here to forms. I'm gonna select record type process steps. I'm gonna find my choking lecture. Now that's called lecture one, don't be fooled by that. I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna say lectures, lectures. Okay, so this has got a whole lot of stuff in it that I don't need anymore because I've got them on the subform. So I'm going to remove all of the stuff. So now I'm just editing the actual assessment form. Okay, so here, leave that one there. I'm going to check. Uh, I'm going to get lecture two coming up. There you go, subforms in there. Cool. I'm going to add the next one above. This time I want lecture one. There we go. Okay, so this is actually adding the field for lecture one subform. I'm going to save and preview now. So what we should see is we should see a duplication of the content. Let's have a look. There we go. There's the learning content there. There's the learning content again. And here we've got all of the questions. Oh, I see. This, this, this actually still has the learning content in the text field. So I'm going to, I'll, I'll go in there and modify that in a moment. Because this is the second field here, the second um, subform. So there we go, we've got the second subform there. And then above here, we've got the first subform. Now I'm gonna fix this because I've just got this double learning content. So you know what I can do? This is a very clever trick you should, you should remember. You can always just click on edit up here. Edit in the, um, in the ribbon takes you straight to editing that, in this case, that form. So I'm gonna click on edit and I straight to that form. Okay, now let's see what I can do here. I could edit this field editing the field. Now I'm going to try and edit the subform. This is the subform you can see here. You can see, you can do some pretty, see, look at this. This has got the extra content in here. Control all, delete that. Click on save, click on save, click on save and preview. And then we've got learning content once for lecture one and learning content second time for lecture two. Okay, so that's all pretty cool stuff, right? And we can publish that and it'll be ready to go. But what if we wanted to have this multiple pages? If you want this to have multiple pages, I'll show you what we do. Click on the edit button up here again, beside forms. Now, remember, these are the two fields. Now, I want to edit the subforms. The easiest way to do this, easy piece of lemon squeezy, is click on the edit button of the field. Now we're editing the field. Now I want to do the edit of the subform. So I click on the edit button of the subform. Now I'm editing the subform. I hope you're following me here. We're dipping and diving. Now I want to change this a section into a using box with heading. So I'm going to add a heading section in here. I'm going to say lecture one. Lecture one. In fact, before I do that, let me just show you if I do it just with, oh, right, using new box with heading. That's what I want to do. Okay, yeah, lecture one. That's good, good, good. I did the right thing. I'm going to click on save now. So I've saved that form. I'm just going to save that as well. Now I'm going to edit lecture two. I'm going to click on the pencil again to edit the subform. I'm going to change this to using box with heading. Open that up to then say lecture oh, two. Okay, the first one's lecture one, this one's lecture two. I hope I did that. I'm going to find out in a moment. Save and preview. There we go. Lecture one. You can see there I've got that, con oh, I can, I've got to modify that um, field if I want to get rid of that content. Lecture one in there. And then look, lecture two. Okay, that's not all though, wait. 
hold your hold your hold your horses. There's more to do. Click on edit here. Now, what we could do is we could go a bit further. Let's go in here. Let's click on the pencil here. Now click on the pencil here. Look, I'm going to edit that subform again. Now I'm editing the subform. That while I'm here, I might let's see if I can edit this content. No, I can't. That's okay. What I'm going to do is I am going to change this from using a box with heading to using new page using box with heading. So it's a page. I haven't done that before, have we? Get ready. Getting exciting. Going to do this one now. Again, click on the edit beside the subform. <clears throat> now I want to change this using box with heading using new page. Click on save, save, save and preview. Let's have a look, see, look at that. We've got lecture one. You'll see we've got these next buttons that have come up now. Click on next and we go to lecture two. Pretty handy, eh? So that's what the customer will see. So the public version, if I click on this, you'll see the public version. What the customer sees. Now, there's everything here except for the fact that usually there's a submit button down the bottom here. That's just not going to be present until a customer actually gets the opportunity to submit it.